On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1974. We're going to be taking a look at Gordon Lightfoot and he's going to be performing Sundown. Hello, oh, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. First of all, thank you everyone for the messages and emails regarding this particular video for tonight and requesting it following the sad news that Gordon has passed away recently. We'll be going through the videos we normally do, seeing what we can see. So I have isolated Gordon's vocal and run it through the pitch monitoring software so that we can look at it in a little bit more detail. Now, for reference, you'll hear that it's a little bit sharp, and that's because back in 1974, being recorded on tape, and the video being on tape, it's just been played back a little bit too fast, but you'll hear on the original record that was released, it was in tune, or at least to 440 hertz tuning. I have edited the pitch monitoring software to 450 hertz tuning, so the notes that we're seeing on screen are a truer representation of what Gordon was singing on the night. But let's jump into the performance and see how Gordon gets on. Thank you. I can see her lying back in a satin dress In a room where you do what you don't confess Sundown, you better take care If I find you've been creeping round my back stairs Sundown, you better take care If I find you've been creeping around my back stairs She's been looking like the queen in a sailor's dream And she don't always say what she really means Sometimes I think it's a shame When I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain Sometimes I think it's a shame when I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain. I can picture every move that a man could make, getting lost in the love and it's your first mistake. Sundown, you better take care if I find you've been creeping round my back stairs. Sometimes I think it's a sin When I feel like I'm winning When I'm losing again it. What I love about this live performance is that the crowd start getting into it as well and you can see the way that Gordon kind of nods to the crowd almost to give them permission to clap along but he wanted that to happen and it does add something to the performance because they are clapping in time which is a big part of it. Sometimes you can't rely on an audience to do that or some people will be clapping on the offbeat but they're all just perfectly in time here which is great. But anyway, just 
putting the spotlight on Gordon with this live performance, the fact that he's playing a 12 string, and we will get into the shapes that he's playing because they look a little bit more complicated than they actually are, especially kind of with the E that he's playing, but I'll get into that. With his voice, I mean, when we do take out the instrumentation, you be, well, you'll be able to hear, but you'll be able to see as well how he has this relaxed vocal delivery, but that's just Gordon Lightfoot. That's just what he did. He has this conversational space where his vocal always sits, but with other performances as well, and we do have a couple of other performances that we've looked at in the past on the channel, he has this really subtle but consistent vibrato. In this particular performance, there isn't as much of that because we don't have lots of long held notes. But have a listen to the isolated vocal. I can see her lying back in a satin dress In a room where you do what you don't confess Sundown, you better take care If I find you've been creeping round my back still. So as I say, we don't have long held notes with vibrato in this performance, but what we do have is just pitch accuracy where th there's a note that doesn't have vibrato. Gordon is so accurate with those notes. And when we take it back, have another listen. Sundown, you better take care. See there, I mean, just with this song going sundown, it's na, you, you know, there's sunda. If you apply vibrato to that, you've got a bit of a safety net, but then he's going na 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 na. And, and, he's, and he's got to hit that note dead on. Of course, he always does. And we can see that on the pitch monitoring software, the way that he's gone from that C sharp four down to the F sharp three. But he's done this little rundown. Na, 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 na. So he's kind of got na, 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 na. We can't really see that first note there. But this is the point that he's really accurate with the rundown as well as that final destination. And the thing is, when you are singing notes in sequence like that, that are part of a run, if you end inaccurately, <laughs> it's going to just ruin the whole run that you've had down and also give no relevance to that first note. So, yes, yeah, so a really subtle detail, but it's really important to na 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 to actually get dead on. But this is the point that Gordon, throughout this performance, as we'll be able to hear, is just dead on with this vocal all the time. Of course, he's playing guitar at the same time, so it's double the difficulty, as I always say. If I find you've been creeping round my back still. And also, all of these really, you can see that this whole vocal phrase is joined up because we've got na na na. We've got, obviously I'm exaggerating it, but we've got slides between notes, which is going to make it even more conversational and, and have that relaxed sound to it because he's just telling a story. Sundown, you better take care of that. Again, great example there, C sharp four, just bang on and F sharp three, bang on as well. And this is the point where he starts the run and finishes the run, just dead on pitch. So it just makes sense of everything that he's coming down with there. I find you've been creeping around my back stairs. And even that backstairs, he kind of does a slide beforehand, hinting to the final note, doesn't sing it straight, but then sings it straight the second time. She's been looking like the queen in a sailor's dream, and she don't always say what... And again, look at the pitch here, A sharp three, just starting bang on, little slide in there, bang on, and you know, a little bit flat, but that is going to sound bang on, it's, you know, it sounds perfect, and then bang on with the A sharp three. So this is the point that when you're singing songs in this kind of style, and why it is deceptively difficult to sing songs like this, <laughs> you know, Gordon Lightfoot is making it look and sound easy because pitch is so important when you don't have a lot of other vocal techniques going on. We've just got sliding and pitch here, really. There is that really subtle vibrato, but no held notes. So it means that throughout the performance, he's got to be just locked into pitch because 
you know, again, thinking about this performance, we've got one guitar that's just playing lead lines, just filling in those spaces, and then we've got Gordon on the 12 string and a bass, and, and that is it. So instrumentally, there's not a lot going on. What is really filling in the space here is Gordon's 12 string guitar. So his guitar playing is really important, and we know that he was a great player, could play finger style as well, we've looked at in other videos. So he's got that instrumental ability to get it all to ring out and fill out the sound while just having this insane accuracy with the vocal, just hitting these notes right between the eyes. Sometimes I think it's a shame when I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain. Sometimes I think it's a shame when I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain. I mean, when you just listen to that, sometimes, times, it's just absolutely locked in on pitch. I can picture every move that a man could make Getting lost in the love and it's your first mistake I mean, when I say that this is deceptive, I'm just jumping in all the time. But when I say it's deceptive, it's because when you look at this on the pitch monitoring software, you can see how he's just nailing the notes all the time. So some people that might want to do a version of this song, might get out their acoustic guitar, start playing along. And because it's just a voice and, and the performance is so stripped back, any note that is ever so slightly off is really going to stick out. And, and that's why it is deceptive, because you might have a bit of a loose attitude to this song, but it won't sound good because you have to be really accurate with pitch. You can't really relax with this, but this is the point that it sounds relaxed. It sounds easy, but it's definitely not. Mm -hmm. Sundown, you better take care. Again, locked in. If I find you've been creeping round my back stairs. Sometimes I think it's a sin when I feel like I'm winning when I'm losing again. And I'm just going to go back to see if we get a reference point here, the C sharp 4, just bang on with sometimes and then coming back. And here, just bang on with the C-sharp 4 with Sundown, obviously, different word, but <laughs> same pitch accuracy. Let's just run it on to the end. I can see her looking fast in her faded jeans. She's a hard love woman, God, me. And look at that slide. I think that was on jeans that we had. Let me just take a look back. Jeans. Yeah, jeans, jeans. He actually starts below, goes up, and then comes all the way down. He's a hard and you know, bang onto that F sharp three. Sometimes I think it's a shame when I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain. Sundown, you better take care of my mind. You've been creeping around my back So again, just this C sharp four, you know, when you're listening to it, it sounds great. But when you then look at it through the pitch monitoring software, you realize for the whole performance, he's just nailing this note. And this isn't pitch corrected, it's not auto tune, it's 1974, but it might fly under your radar. Just how accurate a singer Gordon was, because it sounds so easy, but he's doing something here that's technically really difficult. When we look at the F sharp three, he always comes down and is bang on. Now, the important thing is we've got expression in this vocal because we're not always dead on lines, because this is the point that Gordon is hitting the notes where he needs to just be really accurate. But the na, 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 that little rundown that he has is so spot on. But then he's a little bit more relaxed throughout the rest of the song, giving it expression. So you will see lines that are you know slightly sharp, slightly flat. But that's just expression in there. So he's being really strict with his chorus and the melody that he wants to put across. But then when he's telling that story in the verses, it'll be a little bit looser. But when I say that, still, you know, the kind of accuracy that most people would dream of getting. Sundown, you better take care my you've been creeping around my back still. 
Sometimes I think it's a sin when I feel like I'm winning when I'm losing again. So, I know that a lot of people, when they're talking about Gordon, will talk about his guitar playing, guitar technique, and just songs in general, having that compositional ability to write great songs and have songs like this that uh, I think in everybody's subconscious they're kind of just living in there <laughs> and occasionally you'll hear a line that reminds you of a particular melody and yeah Gordon was so good at writing strong melodies and I have mentioned that in the other videos as well that have even ended up in court cases because of artists that have then written a song that just has a Gordon Lightfoot melody in it and like I said sometimes it's just subconscious that people think they're writing something great but it's actually Gordon's song that they've heard <laughs> years before but just quickly getting into some of the guitar going on here I mean it's a great song and performance from a guitar perspective as well so when we're looking at Gordon's shape here you might think oh which bar chord is he playing here but we know that this is actually an F sharp because of the capo you know you might just see that as an E shape which you can play that if you want to but here we've got the bar of the first finger on the A and the D string and it looks like we've got that third finger on the fourth fret counting this as fret zero on the fourth fret of the G string and I think what he's doing especially from this angle you can see it more clearly He's got a bit of, you can see here, a gap underneath that first finger so that when he's playing through, at least, he gets that kind of thing ringing out. Now, you've got to have the genetics to <laughs> have that much of a, a an angle allowable to you from a flexibility perspective. Some people's knuckles don't go the other way. Uh, so yeah, that's something that you might have to deal with if you, if you can't get that kind of high E string. But because he's playing a 12 string, it means that his high E string is actually two strings. So it'll make it ring out even more. And he might even be able to get the B string ringing out. So that really fell out his sound. But if you are playing along and if you haven't got uh, a knuckle that goes the other way if it's not double jointed or whatever it might be referred to as you can play with that first finger barring and use that third finger I'd probably use my little finger because I've got smaller hands but so you still should be able to be relatively free with that right hand or you can just play your standard E chord the thing that it will affect is the, the chord change that we have because next we have this D flat or if you're seeing this at the bottom of the guitar it'll be in your B position but it's a D flat so when we're playing through from the E got that and now we've changed over to the B I'm going to refer to them as the chords for the position where the capo is just to keep it simple rather than saying an F sharp and a D flat which is the same as the C sharp so anyway yeah getting into those positions from that first finger and the third finger is a lot easier than having to go all the way down from here and then coming all the way up now when you're playing a 12 string of course you're holding a couple of strings at the same time with every finger so the changes can be more difficult so it just makes it a lot easier and then when we go over to the D so in the chorus we have this over to the A it's actually and he's barring this A so again really easy change because the first finger hasn't had to move on any of these chords and that'll go for the D when he goes over to the D, then back to the E. So that first finger is just taking care of that second fret. I just want to put a bit of a spotlight on the lead lines going on as well in the background on that second guitar, just filling in spaces. I mean, that kind of thing. So we had that... You know, just throwing in a lead line that is literally just taking your attention for that, what, second or two 
between the vocal ending and then starting up again. She's been looking like the queen in a sailor. Even there. Yeah, really subtle, but it's in there. Dream and she don't always say what she really means. So Same line there. I think we had, yeah, that kind of thing earlier on. Sometimes I think it's a shame when I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain. Sometimes I think it's a shame when I get feeling better when I'm feeling no pain. I can picture. And again, we've got that. And we, I mean, we do have a fair amount of bending here and vibrato. So it, depending on your string gauge, it might be quite hard work to get some of these bends in there, but it does add so much, just having a little bit extra going on. I think in the chorus where we don't have the lead lines, we do have these just single strums of the chords that just fill in the sound ever so slightly but it doesn't need much because Gordon's doing a lot of work with that 12 string Every move that a man could make getting lost in the love and it's your first mistake we even had kind of a bit, bit of a Chuck Berry type line thrown in there as well Sundown, you better take care if I find you been creeping round Backstairs. Sometimes I think it's a sin when I feel like I'm winning when I'm losing again. I think we just saw a little bit of that. Of that second guitar. A very exaggerated downstroke. And this is something that obviously is going to fill out the sound more because you're kind of getting halfway between actually hearing each note of the chord and just hearing it as a chunk of noise so you know but by doing that it's going to fill in even more of the sound so yeah I mean it's a great performance here considering there's just three guys on stage we're getting such a great sound and now we're into a bit of lead so um, that kind of thing and and again it's kind of along those lines and oh Again, that kind of thing. I haven't worked this all out, so <laughs> we're just kind of uh, busking our way through it. But again, the, the bends there, I mean, this is just so easy to listen to. You just end up listening to the whole thing all over again. But from that guitar perspective, obviously the things that are going on in the background, they're not the kind of thing that you just suddenly pick up a guitar and you can play. So there's a hell of a lot of technique going on here. But it's also the case that it's not overplayed. We have a really nice solo in there. We have, and I, I like the fact that We've kind of got that theme running through there and you know the guitar isn't <laughs> isn't taking the limelight you know he's not kind of overplaying and, and it's even with that lead solo that we had you know it's all kind of relatively kind of understated and just being in exactly the right place you know rather than and in kind of going for something that you know is totally irrelevant but as we can see from this video Gordon just had the ability to write a song uh, play his guitar to a high technical level and produce this vocal that is just so easy to listen to and there's so much expression in his voice and just a great storyteller I mean that's what folk music is all about being able to take people on a journey but convey a story to them so that 
the people listening can really connect with that story and of course a hell of a lot of people did connect with Gordon Lightfoot's songs and performances but thank you guys for requesting this particular video for me to take a look at as I'm sure you guys can appreciate it's not the circumstances under which I'd want to look at Gordon but thankfully we do have these videos that we can look back at and just enjoy his music and these live performances for what they are and the kind of level that he reached but anyway thank you again guys and i'll catch you guys at the next one